drop by today and see the winning team at Lakes Alignment and Truck Service in East Dublin. We're now offering tires and service for all your agricultural and farm equipment. At Lakes, we've got you covered on the road or in the field. Big truck alignment, industrial tire pressing, and commercial truck service. So join the winning team at Lakes Alignment and Truck Service and now offering agricultural tire service. No matter where you are, call 272-4230 and our service trucks are rolling to you. Lakes Alignment and Truck Service, serving you at the same location right behind Thomas Auto Supply since 1954. So grab the family and head on out to the field. This football season, you're sure to be on a winning team when you join the team at Lakes Alignment and Truck Service and now Agricultural Tires and Service, Lakes Alignment, East Dublin. <laughs> Welcome to the Irish Coaches Show. I'm here with head coach and athletic director of Dublin High School, Roger Holmes. Coach, uh, it was a great team, uh, good for the morale, victory over uh, Hawkinsville Friday night. Uh, I thought the kids responded well. Uh, sometimes after you come off a loss, you don't have a great week of practice, and I, I think it kind of indicated that last week. Uh, but I think the kids and the coaching staff uh, responded well Friday night. Well, we played well. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, effort and uh, enthusiasm and playing well. Uh, we'd lost, what, shucks, one, two, two in a row, three out of four. And our kids have not been accustomed to that. That's and correct. And they do not know how to handle that adversity. I think all that's part of being a young football team, inexperienced football team, and trying to grow. Your spirit gets whipped a little bit, and then you, you don't know how to respond, and that's those life lessons that we all have to go through as we mature and get older and have a job and have a family. Things right. aren't always going to go no. our way, and you can't tuck tail. You know, you got to you got to hold your head high during tough times, the same as you do when things are going great. And uh, we went through that some. We had uh, some young men that uh, violated one of our core team rules last week, uh, which is pretty simple, you know. And I, if you're going to miss practice, you call in. Right. You know, and I think with some of these COVID issues, you've got a lot of built-in excuses. Uh, as to why you can't do the job that needs to be done. And, you know, you've got some young men that are leaving school. I've got a headache or I've got this or I've got that. You know, we want their safety and well-being, but that doesn't excuse you from picking up the phone and having conversations uh, with your boss and in a job. That's in this case, that puts me in that position as the head football coach. Well, that's what you're training them for, and 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 for for life lessons, and 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 I can I can assure you, uh, Dublin High School and the way you run things around here is is not going to change. Coach Holmes is going to stand by his rules. Well, if you don't, then you don't have uh, the organization and the, and the things that you need to have a quality football program. So with that being said, uh, we had one tight end injured. We had two more tight ends that missed practice and didn't report. Uh, so they sat, which sent us into the game Friday night without a tight end, which is a major part of our offense. Major well, part of that wing T. We went to our uh, loose sets, which are all split ends in the game, and we knew that that was in the game plan, and, th and that's what we went with. And our kids provided a heck of a night, uh, did a great job. Uh, we had a, a new starting right tackle and Drew Rozier. Drew had started game one and had lost his position, but it continued to work and get better. And his backup or his starter at that time, the person in front of him was another one that, that missed and didn't call in. Well, 
Drew stepped in, took his spot, and had a good night. Now some of these other guys have got some catching up to do if uh, they want to get their spots back. Well, I, these I guys also noticed, well. noticed on your board uh, the, the way some of the kids have graded out. Uh, and you grade hard. We grade, uh, they're, for, they're, we grade and we no tell doubt. our kids that. We're trying to grade for perfection. They're, we know we're not going to get perfection, right. they but responded. we're grading for that. They yeah. responded this week. In, we, the, in the grades for some of these younger kids, you can tell that Hatton played, that got in and played, gave tremendous effort over there in Hawkinsville this week. It was, it was, it was obvious to us sitting up there. It was, a different, it was a different team. Well, they played well. Overall, we scored running the football. We scored throwing the football. We scored on a kickoff return. All of those things are, are positives. Defensively, we played a little bit better in spurts. We're still not playing at a level defensively. That uh, We gave some yards up. You have to play to be able to win. We gave up two long runs. Uh, one of those, sophomore, they were running an off-tackle play, and he's a corner. He ran down inside, thought the ball was inside, and they ended up bouncing it outside and outran us to the edge, and that was their first long touchdown run. And then the second one, we just got out of position and uh, missed a couple of open field tackles, and it turned into a long touchdown run. But all in all, very positive night, a uh, chance for our, to play a lot of guys. The second half was a full running clock. Uh, we weren't able to get our number two offensive group in as a full unit because we returned right. it. Well, they went down and scored on our twos right there at the end, and we put our special teams in. Well, we returned the kickoff for a touchdown, and now when we kick off back to them, our young defensive kids were in the game. We weren't able to get the ball no. back. Right. But, uh, you know, a good night for everybody. I think they left with a lot of excitement. J.T. Wright, uh, I'll mention his name. I always like to mention some of the kids' names. Uh, all the parents watch this show. JT, I think, had a, had a touchdown rushing. JT had a touchdown receiving. And JT had a, had a kickoff for a touchdown. Uh, big three big name? plays, no right. doubt. Three big plays. Coy, Coy Ashley had a touchdown run. Uh, Our fullback had two touchdowns Jeremiah, the other night. Jeremiah Green had uh, fast, two long he's, touchdowns. He's a fast runs. kid. Jeremiah Green is probably the fastest player on our football team. At fullback. At fullback, and, and it's a learning experience. You know, he, he popped the trap up in there the other night, and he said, Coach, you know, you remember you told me that if there's no nose to hit it straight up, that's what I did, and, and it was wide open. <laughs> I laughed. I said, well, that's why we try to remind you of that and coach you on that on a daily I think, basis. I think so, he had a 19-yard touchdown run and maybe a 60-something yard touchdown yeah, run. Yeah, he had, he had a really good night, and uh, we need that production. You know, as our fans think back to what we've talked about in the past, we have to be balanced. We've got to have yardage out of all three backs. They've all three got to be a threat. You need the threat to throw the football. And the other night, I think we had – two touchdown passes, uh, two more big completions. So, uh, yeah. Now, yeah, we were in uh, – the, the fans really were impressed over there with uh, DeQuarius Evans. Uh, we know he's got the ability to throw the ball, but I think, my gosh, he was like four or five for almost 120 yards. Yeah, he, he threw the, the ball, ball well. A couple Ty, of touchdowns. Ty maybe. Wright uh, had another touchdown catch and made another really good diving catch. And then, uh, let's see, it was JT. JT. Uh, caught one for a touchdown off the screen, which was about a 50-yard touchdown run, I think. Quay Ashley had a big catch out in the flats and turned it into a 30-yard gain. So, productive night in all categories. And, uh, shucks, we're, we're looking forward to getting back on the practice field today with uh, – Wilcox come into town Friday night. They're in the driver's seat for the region championship. There's no question about that. And uh, our loss to Dooley has put us in a, in a bad way. Right. And we've got to find a way to pull this one out. And, uh, and it's certainly not going to be an easy chore. And I know we'll talk about them a little bit more in a minute. 
We'll we'll uh, we'll watch some highlights here shortly of the uh, of the Hawkinsville game, and then and then yeah, we'll move on to Wilcox. Also, coach, I'd like to mention the kicking game again. We scored eight points, I believe, in the kicking game. I think Potter had six extra points, and then you brought uh, young Connor Daniel in for a, a couple of extra points. So we're right proud of both of those young men. Well, and we've got another kicker that's moved in, uh, Bo Baum. He's right. been with us for a couple of weeks. He's a freshman. His dad teaches here at Dublin High School uh, in our JROTC program. If we'd have got one more, we were going to give Bo a chance to hit one. But Connor, you know, Connor's been with us now for two years, and right. he's behind a really good place kicker in John Potter. But it always helps for those kids to get a little game experience. Connor got some last year because, unfortunately for us, John Potter's a senior, and he's going to be moving on. So we got to we gotta gotta have, have got to need next year's guys getting a little experience right now. We were right proud of the, the of, uh, of always, of course, of uh, John. Uh, but it was good to see Connor come in and and get a shot at at a couple there. Uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back and watch some Hawkinsville highlights. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource. Safe, clean, efficient. All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. They work all week for Friday night. Go Dublin! Are you ready? And hey! Keep going! And when you call, click, or visit Dublin Chevy Nissan, you'll see our teamwork in action. Let me put your dream in your driveway. Let's take a test drive. The right vehicle, the right experience, the right dealer. Good job! Here we and go! And remember, Don sells cars well only at Dublin Chevy Nissan. You'll score a winning deal every time at Dublin Chevy Nissan. First Lawrence Bank invites you to experience banking at its best. Whether you have personal or business needs, we're a full service bank big enough to handle all of your banking needs and small enough to provide you with that personal touch you've grown to expect from a community bank like First Lawrence Bank. Looking forward to your future, that's First Lawrence Bank in Dublin and Dexter, member FDIC. Maybe he landed here totally by coincidence. But if by chance he's admiring your fresh coat of Benjamin Moore soft sky blue, well, that's a pretty high compliment. Coming from an expert. Quality products and installation since 1985. That's Four Seasons. Progressive Rural Telephone Co-op offers a full range of communication products and services to its members in Lawrence County and surrounding areas. We take pride in being your total communications provider, and we work hard to provide quality services at the best prices. In addition to offering phone service, we provide high-speed internet and digital high-def TV. And we always strive to put our members first. Progressive Rule, your total communications company. Small enough to know you, large enough to serve you. ProgressiveTel.com. Call 478-984-4201 or stop by 890 Simpson Avenue in Rents. Progressive Rule Telephone Co-op. And we're back, Coach. Uh, we kind of got the pick of the litter of the highlights that we want to show uh, tonight. Uh, I don't know what B. Wall sent us. He's always gracious and does a great job for us and gets things to us. But uh, let's see what we got. Here's our opening play of the game. You got J.T. Wright uh, getting on the edge. And when J.T. gets on the edge, there's always a threat. He's going to go to the house. He's got good vision. He's got good speed. And he... He gets the ball out in the open, and, and he makes a lot of big plays. Here's our next play on offense, which we get a defensive stop. They punt to us, and this was actually going to be our first play of the game the other night. We wanted to throw a, throw a pass on the first play and see if we could get behind them. And, uh, we would have. It looks like we would have, but the kickoff kind of put us into the boundary. 
right. uh, where they kicked it, and we wanted to run this to the to the wide side of the field. But again, because you're a heavy run team, their defensive backs are getting drawn up, trying to handle the run, and we're running right by them. And Ty Wright actually had to dive to make this catch. It was, he didn't quite get far enough outside. Quarterback led him outside. And uh, it's a good play, though. Oh, Ended great up. catch, good yeah. play, no question about that. Uh, now we're coming back, and looks like uh, this is Quay Ashley's turn to get his hand on the football. And again, we're running the jet sweep, and a heck of a job out of Desmond Gilbert, who's played a lot better for us uh, the last two weeks. Desmond's done a really, really, really good job uh, moving the football. Back under center, still within drive two, and this is the touchdown run by uh, our fullback, Jeremiah Green. This is what we call the ride, which is a weak side belly. Uh, very good block out of Ramonte Darty. Great block out of our tackle. Uh, blocking down right here, doing a good job in Caleb Hall. Then our running back, uh, Quay Ashley's up inside on the linebacker right there. And now you see the fullback following his block and getting in open field and making a couple of guys miss. And what do they say? Rumbling, bumbling, and stumbling. It's a touchdown iron. Quay had his head in the right place there, I noticed. Yeah, it looked like he had it down a little bit. Doing better. But uh, we're getting a little bit better in, in those categories. You know, they called us off guard a little bit in the fact they came out in too tight wishbone. They've right. been a wing T team that's uh, identical to us. And uh, they, uh, like we say, they showed up in too tight wishbone. They've had some running backs hurt. They kind of got their hands tied in being able to execute everything that they wanted to do. Here's our fullback on the fullback trap. This is his long touchdown run that we mentioned earlier. And when he got out on the open now, he kind of outran everybody. But yes, again, that's, that's Jeremiah Green. We'll take one more look at that. Beautiful blocking up front. Uh, Des Gilbert gets out and gets to the linebacker. A great trap by Ramonte Darty up inside at the guard. He gets his trap on 77, and the Red Sea kind of parted for us right there. So Jeremiah again. Pulling away from folks. Pulling away from people at the end. They forced us to to jump in a different defensive look that we haven't practiced. We had to kind of jump into a 5-3 look because of the full house backfield and the ISO blast game. But a really good stand right here defensively. A lot of hats around the ball here. A lot of hats getting to the football. There's a nice tall sweep, but we get Quay Ashley upfield to get it turned in, or actually that's JT Wright. Uh, linebackers running inside out. Uh, did a really good job of making that play. That was uh, Dominique Doherty, I think, on the tackle. Right. I believe he led our team in tackles the other night. So, great night out of Dominique, doing a good job. Here's showing some discipline. It's third and one, and uh, we catch a break on this one now. They actually had us. They run by us right there, and uh, it's a play that we worked quite a bit and felt good about. It was the same play out of a different formation Imagine. that we hadn't been looking at, and they caught us off guard there. Uh, it was lucky that we didn't, they didn't complete it. Here's JT again getting on the outside, a really good block out of number nine. Again, Quay Ashley helping seal the edge. You see Quay coming out of the backfield and being able to get in position to seal that safety right here, right which there. now gives us the edge, which is what you're looking for. JT kind of does the rest and making some people miss and doing a good job of avoiding and, and picking up extra yards as we head down, head down into the red zone. Good vision there by Mr. JT Wright. The next play was going to be a touchdown catch uh, by Ty Wright. But That's going to be that uh, ride 35 pass ends cross maybe something like that yeah, yeah. it uh you know it, it was big for us the other night uh, i could hear strick up there calling it well and, it, and it's aggravating you know their coaches and we were talking after the game i said i hated even call it because i know you guys 
have to have worked on it a great deal. He said, Coach, we're standing there screaming, here it comes, here it comes, and the corner still goes to sleep. He bit. And uh, allows it to turn into a big play. So uh, I guess our internet shut down on us here again. So let's take a break and we'll come back and talk about Wilcox. Right. Community Bank of Dublin Lawrence County is here to help with all of your financial needs. Our team knows what it takes to make life easy and convenient and will help you get set up with our mobile and online banking. We founded Community Bank on common sense banking and a dedication to help people just like you. Our loan officer Gail Rainey and branch manager Amy Thompson know what it takes to make life easy and convenient and can help you with loans with almost everything from your automobile, home, land, or any financial goals you have. Come visit us today. Community Bank of Dublin Lawrence County, where common sense banking never goes out of style. Since 1999, Stephenson has been working to keep you and our community safe. Our mission is to lessen the trauma suffered by individuals who have been abused or assaulted. We provide evaluation in a safe, caring environment to encourage collaboration of services for the benefit of the victim and their non-offending family members. We strive to increase the protections of victims and hold offenders accountable. Here at Stepping Stone, you are never alone. If you or someone you know has been a victim of child abuse or sexual assault, please know we are here for help and comfort. We offer a variety of resources to help meet your needs and get you out of difficult situations. If you are in immediate danger, please call 911 or call our fully confidential crisis number at 478-595-8339. You can also reach us at our office at 478-275-9010. Hello everyone, my name is Nikki Stevens. I'm the owner of Dublin Meat Market. We are located 1121 Telfair Street, Dublin, Georgia. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and we are closed on Sunday. Stop by for great and quality customer service and excellent meat. Thank you. Dublin Meat Market also offers drive-thru services. You can call us at 478-205-5055. We have the best prices in town, and we look forward to meeting you. And remember, we've got that meat. When your ability to get up out of a chair, stand, walk, and do routine activities without hurting every day, having to take Tylenol, Motrin, or leave to get through the day, then it's time to come see us. Again, if you're avoiding activities, you're not going to do things with your friends or your family or your children, then you should not let it impact your life like that. We have things from medications to injections to surgery. A lot of people I think are scared to come see us initially because they're not ready for surgery. 85% of the people that I see in my office I'm treating with something other than surgery. It's that small group of people at the end of their disease that are getting knee and hip replacements. So don't be afraid at least to come and let us check it for you. And we're back. Coach, like I said, we had our pick of the litter probably of highlights from last week's games, and, and I think we got enough in to show our fans kind of that weren't there, uh, how we dominated Hawkinsville. Uh, the kids really stepped up. I thought the effort was great. It needed to be because we have got a battle coming into the Shamrock Bowl Friday night. Well, it certainly doesn't get any easier, and I rank Wilcox right up there uh, with the best teams that we've played to this point. Uh, they, they lost two early in the year. They lost their opening game, I think it was 21-19 to uh, Bleckley, Bleckley County. I think that was at Bleckley. And then slide just really jumped and on it, them. And it was an extra point type deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've... Dodge got us. I think Bleckley got Dodge uh, in a very close game uh, in that one. So when you look, start looking at common opponents and those type things, uh, Shucks, I don't remember we got by Wheeler in a close one. Well, so did uh, Wilcox the other night. Actually, 37, 34. Wilcox like scored with a minute and 30 seconds to go. Uh, they were down with five minutes to go. Uh, 
Wilcott, or excuse me, Wheeler County gets a stop on four downs. And dead gum, if they don't turn around and fumble the ball right back on second down and give Wilcox nice. the ball back right at midfield. And uh, I think Wilcox converted on a fourth down attempt for a touchdown with a minute and something to go in the game and pulled it out 37-34. Now, when you, first thing when I look at Wilcox is I think balance offensively and defensively. They're, uh, from the offensive standpoint, their run game has been very effective. Uh, and I'm sorry I don't have a roster in front of me, but number one for them is kind of their workhorse in the backfield. I think he ran for 130, 140 yards the other night, but he caught passes out of the backfield again for a number, another 70-something yards. They've got three wide outs in their spread offense that they move the ball around to. Uh, their quarterback, who's the coach's son, is an ultra-competitive young man. Uh, he can run the football. I think uh, when you watch his arm strength and his move and his pocket awareness, all of those things to me, I think without question, he will be on the radar of several colleges. Yeah, He's only a junior. Kid gave us fits last year. Well, he did last year, and then we feel that he probably <laughs> – Will again, because he doesn't mind running the football. He can run the ball. Yeah. He does not, you know, he, he stands in the pocket very well. He moves in the pocket. When he's scrambling around, he still keeps his eyes up. Their receivers do an excellent job of scramble drill, which basically what you're coaching and you're teaching, mm -hmm. if you're running a deep route and the quarterback scrambles, you stick your foot in the ground, you come back to the quarterback, if you're in a short route and the quarterback scrambles, now all of a sudden you turn and you turn that into a deep route. Right. Uh, they have that concept down very, very well in their system and they do a good job with it. Their offensive tackles uh, both have a lot of size. One I think is 250, the other is 290. Their guard play has been very solid. They're not going to give you a ton of blocking schemes that you have to prepare for with your defensive front. Right. Uh, but they're going to run the inside zone. They'll run a little outside zone or speed sweep. They're going to run counter. And they've got just a little bit of an ISO lead game. And uh, they usually do that when they go to two backs. Well, uh, you've they, seen them since uh, this is has become almost another rivalry uh, for Dublin. We've had some really, really good games in the last two years, some really hard-fought, nasty football games, hard-hitting, hard and it's almost turned into a, a new rivalry well, for our school. Uh, I, I respect think, uh, them a lot. Well, there's a lot of respect there, I can, I can assure Absolutely. you of that. And they've had a good football program for a long time. Uh, They've got a very solid football program right now. You know, when you look over at them defensively, you would have thought you would see a little bit of drop off because they lost their middle linebacker, a young man named Owens, that I actually voted for as the defensive player of the year in our region last year, their middle linebacker. Well, his running mate, number 14, and I don't remember his name right now, but he signed with the University of Kentucky and had multiple power right. five offers. So you graduate, uh, the linebacker that played in the middle went to uh, sign with Army. So you lose a linebacker that goes to Army and another linebacker that goes to the SEC, you would anticipate a little bit of being down and in their secondary. And I think that had a little bit to do with them getting off to a slow start when the season started, kind of feeling their way. Well, they know their way now. Right. They, they've, they've got, got some, some playing time and their and their kids that are playing linebacker are doing great. Now the strength of their football team is their defensive front. Very aggressive, good size. They'll go 290, 230, 240, and uh, 245 across that front four. Uh, they can all run. And you know, for us, I think the biggest issue is going to be are we going to come to a street brawl? 
because now they're going to roll up their sleeves and they're going to hit that's, you. That's they're, that's what it's going to be. They're going to strike years. you, and and I'm still waiting on this football team to show the mental and physical toughness it takes to compete with a team that's that caliber. You know, it's easy when you go out like we did the other night and you bang, 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 and all of a sudden you're up 21 nothing. Uh, well, it won't be that way for us this Friday night. If we're gonna, if we're gonna be able to win this football game, I think they're a lot like Swainsboro, and we didn't, we did not uh, line up and compete with Swainsboro. But hopefully, our young men uh, have improved over the last couple of weeks, and we can uh, find a way to hang in there with this bunch and keep it close and find a way to win it. Right. Well, Coach, it's been another great show. Uh, like I say. I think this team is, is, is starting to find their identity. We uh, had a great game Friday night. What we need out of the kids is to come in and have another really a good week of practice and step in here and, and see if we can't handle, a, handle a, uh, a, a really good Wilcox County team coming in here. There's no question. You know, if we want to have a chance to win a region championship, uh, which these kids mentioned the other day, that's their goal. They want to be only the second team in the history of Dublin High School to have four straight region championships in a row. We can't drop this one. I think mathematically there's no way we're going right. to uh, win a region championship if we don't find a way to win this one. So uh, we need a great crowd. Fall break starts Friday, so there's Absolutely. no school. That's a, that's a little bit of a... Uh, Concern just because of routine, but at the end of the day, let's uh, fill up the bowl and get ready for a great night of football uh, with Wilcox County and the Dublin Irish. All right, folks, we'll see you next week with some highlights of our Wilcox County game. <laughs>